Hi, new year, new concert. I'm really excited. Even though I'm running on two hours of sleep right now to make this video for you so I can post it, I am still very excited to tell you, to tell you, my first concert of this year will be in 19 days. My camera's crooked. Hi. <laughs> so January 23rd, Saturday, you know, it's always on Saturdays, my live stream concerts. It's gonna be at 11 a.m. as always, Eastern Standard Time on Dream Stage. It's because of you being super enthusiastic in the past for my Dream Stage livestream concerts that I'm invited back for the third time in such a short period of time. So I'm very excited. If you don't know anything about me, there are two things that I care about. One, playing and sharing classical music with as many people as possible. And two, doing charity and uh, trying to give back because I have such a rare and unique platform here and I just really want to redistribute the support that I have already from my special patrons on Patreon but also in general your support for me it's um, never taken for granted so so that's why January 23rd is super exciting because one I get to perform but also two I get to do fundraising there's a third point that makes it more exciting it's because I get to play with Jan Vogler who you might have heard of him through my YouTube, if not otherwise, because he is one of the best cellists in the world. And I'm very lucky that since we've met around two years ago, he has become a friend of mine and uh, he's been very supportive of my endeavors and I am just very happy and excited to play with him. So excited that um, I'm actually running on two and a half hours of sleep, but I really need to tell you this and I really want to announce this to you. So I am now awake after two and a half hours of sleep to make this video so I can publish it in the morning, but you don't need to know that because you don't really need to know or care about this. <laughs> yeah, my brain was just driving myself crazy and memorized one of the pieces on this program. That's how I know that I'm excited and really loving this concert program. Anyway, not only do I get to play music, with a wonderful musician, I also get to do fundraising. My very first live stream concert of this new year will be a fundraising benefit concert for a local 802 emergency relief fund, which helps New York musicians who have been struggling so much. And I just hope that all of us together, we can help them a little bit. So I hope you will get your tickets and I hope to see you January 23rd. All right, now on to the topic of this vlog that you probably most likely clicked on to watch. Sight reading. So there are going to be two parts to this vlog. First, I'm going to answer a few questions from you on Instagram, and then I will show you the raw and uncut sight reading, some of which is actually quite bad looking back. But anyway. So since the last time you've seen my face, I've been doing some reflecting on 2020 and specifically about what I would like to improve on or emphasize on my YouTube because to be honest, I don't enjoy editing videos and I do not enjoy making annotations, screenshotting every single bar of music that I'm learning, also having to film myself and be ready to film myself whenever I'm practicing. It was driving me nuts <laughs> towards the end of the year. So I really wanted to find a good balance for us to continue because I still care about bringing you closer into the insights of being a classical musician, but there has to be some sort of balance where I don't have to constantly be thinking about filming and doing YouTube while trying to just be a musician and practice and just be a person. <laughs> so the one video that I really enjoyed making that has to do with practicing or sight reading is this one where I explain to you how I sight read and it seemed like a lot of you enjoyed it and seemed to learn stuff from it. So rather than just showing you my sight reading without any explanations, I decided to ask you on Instagram for questions about my process of learning box French Suite number six, which I decided to play for this benefit concert. So the footage that you're gonna see is from December 15th, 2020. That was during a time when I really wanted to be offline. I actually broke down all of my tripods and all of the cameras and lightings and all of that so that my home, which is a studio apartment, doesn't look like a workplace every time I wake up and go to the piano. I just don't really want to see tripods <laughs> everywhere and cords and 
gears everywhere when I wake up. So, in an attempt to make it a bit more homey, I took away all of my equipment, broke it down, packed it away. So that's why I apologize. This footage that you're gonna see is just straight from my phone. And that's why the audio is not so great because it was just sitting on the side of the keyboard. And uh, yeah, but I needed to do for my mental health. So I thank you for your understanding. Now, to the questions that you guys asked, if you missed your chance, make sure to follow me on Instagram you get the quickest updates for me because it is super easy for me to make a story and post about something spontaneously. So that's the way to go. Now to your questions. First one, how do you approach a box suite? If you don't know, box suites are made up of little movements that are dances. So first thing I try to get a sense of is the pulse of each movement. What makes them unique? What makes them the dances that they are? and just try to fill the rhythm so I know where the strong beats are and uh, dance with the music because these are dances. And then after I get the sense from just purely reading, sight reading the music, I might look into a little bit of historical background. I did look at some videos back then and it was my earlier days of approaching box suites in general to see how people danced. Next one, how do you know what finger to use while sight reading? German term would be finger salts. I have to give a shout out to one of you. I don't know if it's one of you necessarily, but someone commented on my last explaining sight reading video about the importance of knowing just the geographic layout of the keyboard. I just completely overlooked that because I've been playing piano for 19 years and um, it's just, you know, you don't really think about something so rudimentary like that, but it is true. That's something that will help you with sight reading so much because you don't have to constantly try to look for the key while also trying to look for the notes on the page and trying to make the connection, you know, that's a lot. Because if you don't know where the keys are on the piano or on your keyboard, it's like trying to figure out what method of transportation to use between point A and point B without knowing where point B is or where point A is, you know? So, having said that, after you know where the geographic layout is and where all the keys are, it's a lot to do with common sense because you have five fingers and you probably don't want to twist and turn, right? It's like when you walk, you don't want to walk left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, unless you were super happy and skipping around. That's not really the usual method of walking. So same thing with fingerings, it's just something that you pick up, of course, from knowing your scales, but also from knowing where the keys are. I thought about this, something that might help is to just be able to play the scales in all sorts of fingering. So it might not be your natural, you know, five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, because it's not always that you get to start on your pinky or on your thumb, right? So just knowing how to play the different passages and scales in different fingerings, that's just something that you learn from experience, so don't freak out if you don't know how to do that. It's not like I practice that. I'm sure there are exercises where you can do that, but I learn it from just playing lots of Bach and lots of music. Next question, is it better to learn smaller segments then move on or try to read the piece as a whole first? This is a very subjective approach, what I'm about to tell you, so don't take mine as the definite approach. In fact, I'm gonna link two episodes from my second channel if you don't know. I started a second channel called Together with Classical, Classical Chats video series, and I talked with two pianists who have a lot more experience and they actually have different approaches when it comes to learning pieces and also learning Bach, which I think would give you a very interesting perspective. Anyway, my method is that I just go straight through. I don't care if I make mistakes, as you will find out in a few minutes. I just want to know the overall story. Later, I can go into the sections where I have difficulties and really get the notes correct and, I don't know, just get the feel of the music first. That's really important for me. So that's why I just play through the entire thing many times before I go into the little sections. Next, since it's Bach, how to practice articulations. I mean, when to play legato or staccato, which is very similar to this other question about how I come up with phrasings. This goes along with my previous answer where I just kind of 
intuitively understand the more I play the entire piece through. I just play so many times. <laughs> and then eventually I will get to know the pulse of the music and kind of understand where the highs and lows of phrases are, just depending on the shape of the lines, of the melodies, of the music, yeah. And uh, it's really hard for me to explain because it's not like a scientific recipe that you do and you apply. It's like, how do you know when to put emphasis when you talk? It's just something that's a bit natural, right? You don't really think about, I should say this word in this pitch and then say it here and then say it like this here and then say it like this here. It all comes down to playing lots of music, listening to lots of music, getting that musical sense that naturally becomes your musical common sense and go from there. That's why this sight reading that you're about to see, it's not super musical all the time. Sometimes I have good intuitive ideas, sometimes I am just wrong in terms of tempo or phrasing and I definitely improved and I'm still kind of finding new ideas and ways of expressing certain things the more I play and the more I just play through the music. I think that makes up 80% of my practicing of this Bach French suite since I first sight read it. So that's my method. It's perfectly fine if you have a different method, but that's just my perspective. Next, how do you play both hands at the same time while sight reading? What do you focus on? I focus on... Well, harmonies help a lot. That's why I said that music theory helps a lot because you immediately see a group of notes and know what family they belong to and so what notes would come next. You start to anticipate the things that come after it. Sometimes I make the wrong assumptions, as you'll see, but it also helps to understand kind of the trajectory. Harmonies help because sometimes one hand is playing the melody and the other hand is just accompanying the outline of that harmony. So you don't have to really be so worried about, oh, what is that note? And then what is that note up there? It just kind of goes together in the same family and knowing your music theory helps. And that's why I can play both of my hands at the same time. Not always. Not always, but but it's perfectly fine if you cannot right now at this stage in your life to play both hands at the same time right away when you're sight reading. It's something that you just have to get the experience and you have to just be shameless when you sight read. So you can really push through that self-conscious, ah, this sounds horrible. You just keep going through and eventually you'll be able to do it. Obviously, it depends on what your goal is when you're sight reading. For me, I just want to focus on the overall structure and just kind of know where the story goes. So I might miss a note here and there, I might be wrong sometimes, but generally I just want to know the different musical ideas, what the topic of that section is or that movement is, and yeah, figure out what the story is, essentially. Last question, do you scan the piece before sight reading or just go straight into it? For this Bach, French suite number six, I went straight into it because I got the invite to play with Jan just the day before. So what was my goal of sight reading was to figure out what piece can I learn in just five weeks or so from scratch because I really wanted to learn new pieces. I didn't want to play something that I've played before and I really wanted to challenge myself. And um, because it's been a while since I've learned a new Bach, actually, now that I think about it. So I really wanted to take this opportunity and learn something really new. So I didn't scan the piece before sight reading what you're about to see in just a few seconds. I just wanted to flip through some pieces and uh, I landed on the sixth of French Suite book. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to sight read, get my hands into the piece and see whether I like it or not. And I did. So I'm gonna be playing it on January 23rd. I hope you found this Q&A helpful in some way. I really hope it did help you in some way or give you some insights because um, I really want to commit to this format if it's helpful to you. So let me know in the comments and I will see how to go from there going forward into this new year. It's not fun to criticize myself 
twice you know i already do it when i'm practicing and then when i have to do it again in my video editing program for you to understand what's going on in my practice it's not super great for my mental health sometimes so i want to add this segment in there to balance it out so i'm not just sitting at my computer for 15 hours critiquing myself anyway be kind keep striving i hope you enjoyed this vlog and i hope to see you on january 23rd bye